Hi, this is the second part of my series on GUI frameworks for the Go programming language. And today I'm going to talk about Qt, or as I sometimes call it, Qt. I prefer Qt, but most people call it Qt. So maybe I'll switch between the two pronunciations. Right, so let me show you the bindings I prefer. And these are Mapu MIQT here. Um, because these allow static and dynamic binding on all supported platforms. Now supported platforms are in this case Linux, Windows, Android, uh, FreeBSD, which is not so important maybe, uh, and macOS. Unfortunately, these bindings don't support iOS, uh, which is a pity because you can run iOS applications on macOS, but not vice versa. So maybe they will add support for iOS later. Right now they don't have that apparently, but uh, what's important here is that they have dynamic binding, which has uh, implications for the licensing, and we'll talk about that um, very briefly too. Now, let me first show you some demo. I run that. I don't know, that's a UI designer demo where the GUI is loaded uh, from a file, but that's not so important. So when, when you first run this, it takes a very long time because it has to compile all the C++ uh, files. So bear with me, you have to be patient. It can take a very long time. Don't stop the compilation. It will get there eventually. And then if you run it the second time, it's faster. So this time it was already compiled, so it should be reasonably fast. And there it is. Now, as you can see, this is a bit dated as a user interface, but it's actually matching the look of my Linux distribution here. So that's the theme of my Linux distribution. Now, Qt renders their own widgets. So it's not necessarily native widgets, but they do it in a way, according to the theming, that it's uh, close enough for most use cases. So users will be able to see somehow that it's not native application. Uh, there are some small differences, but they are not, you know, large differences. They remain small and it, it's fine uh, in a sense. Qt uh, is so powerful that some of the widgets are even better than the native ones. Uh, it's one of the oldest frameworks, it's more than 20 years old and well established and there's almost nothing you cannot do in Qt if you have the bindings. Uh, of course, it requires uh, CGO um, like all of these bindings do. Uh, it's a framework that was originally developed for C++ only, then not so long ago uh, Python was made a first-class language, but these are the only really fully supported languages, but um, now there are bindings for many languages and some of them are for Go, right? Okay, this is maybe not the, the most interesting demo here, so let me show you some widget gallery. Qt widget gallery. So unfortunately, maybe I should look for Qt6 here. No. So unfortunately here the, the documentation seems to be a bit outdated in terms of visual design. So Qt uses automatically the style and theming of the platform and tries to emulate that. Here you can see the Windows style, then you can see the Windows Vista style. Okay, um, that's not the most recent version of Windows, so I guess um, now it also has more recent types of styles. But you can see here it has all the standard user interface elements. And it has even way more than the standard. If you look more closely, uh, I will show you a whole list later. Uh, here you have macOS, Fusion style, whatever that is. Okay, so let me show you the whole widget list. Widget list. Oh, yeah, it's here. It's here already. Here's the overview. And you can see here you have plenty of widgets to choose from, an incredible amount. You have all kinds of editors 
with validation for the data. Let me just put this window away and this one too. Right, you have menus, of course, you have uh, spin boxes, styles of all kinds, date edits, different kinds of buttons, sliders, and so on, tab bars, tab widgets, and so on. So you have all the usual uh, desktop uh, widgets, and you have also very advanced widgets like calendar views, tree views, performance list views, and table views. That's quite important for some applications, right? They need to be performant, they need to be fast. You also have an undo system that you will have to use if you want to have undo in the controls provided by Qt, or it's better to use that than rolling your own, and so on. You have a number of ways of docking widgets, and reorganizing widgets dynamically and you can save that. So there's plenty to choose from. So as a framework in terms of platform integration and supported widgets, I think you will not find anything better than Qt. That also works together with Go right now. Uh, there are other frameworks for other languages that are equally powerful, maybe Avalonia, maybe Flutter and Dart and so on, maybe Kotlin multi-platform. Well, I don't think it's that far yet, but um, this one works with Go, and so it's a possibility. The only problem is, of course, the licensing, and that's why sometimes people don't use it. So let me go to the licensing. Let me go back first to this binding here. So why is dynamic binding so important? And why should you use this binding if you can, if you don't need support for iOS? Well, this binding is MIT licensed, so you don't have to worry about the licensing of the binding itself. The recipe is LGPL licensed, and if you want to have a commercial license, you have to contact them, so it can cost you some money. And you can only use the LGPL here if you have dynamic linking. If you don't link dynamically, you cannot use LGPL, but there is more to LGPL than just dynamic linking. So if you use LGPL, you have to basically provide the end user with a way to swap the library for their own version. So in this case, all the cute libraries that you use can be the main library or it could be some additional libraries, need to be provided in a way that the user can swap them out. And since some of them are in the LGPL version 3, which has an anti tibiarization clause, this also implies that the user needs to have the correct and working instructions to reinstall the application on their device. So it's not just enough to tell them, hey, yeah, sure, find a way to use your own dynamic library here, uh, which might work with some hacking. You have to provide the concrete instructions. Now, is that difficult on desktop platforms? No, you can easily do that on Linux, Windows. It's also possible on macOS. But for instance, on Android, it's not that simple. You have to provide, as far as I know, from reading about it, you have to provide a package that the user can download that contains your application code. So it's like a, a APK skeleton. And then you need to provide the commands they can use to put their own library into that and how to install it on their device, which is easy for Android. You can sideload the applications if you have the APK package. Right, <clears throat> so it's possible, but not that straightforward. And as far as I know, not many people do that. Um, it's, it could be uh, a bit uh, annoying to set up. And also, who knows what happens in the future? Maybe it's getting harder and harder in the future when Google decides to close down Android a little bit more for security purposes. But right now it's possible. Now on iOS, that's not possible at all. In this binding, it doesn't work anyway, but even if you have the recipe, uh, recipe only does static linking on iOS, 
But even if you had a bundle, an application bundle with uh, dynamic libraries in it, you cannot just swap them out. iOS is not um, designed that way for security purposes. You need to sign the code and so on, and you need to have it reviewed and it needs to be downloaded from the App Store. I mean, you can sideload on your personal device, I think. Maybe I'm wrong about it, but I think you can. But still, it's it's not going to be easy. I, as far as I know, it's not possible on iOS. So I've read about that. So, LGPL is not always a, the best option or a viable option, which brings me to the licensing. Now, the main license for one developer seat for Qt is quite expensive. It's between, I don't know, exactly uh, like 3,700 to 4,400 euros, depending on the license. It's going to be above 4,000 for mobile and desktop platforms. That's the main enterprise license per developer. That's not cheap. <clears throat> Even for some a larger business, it's not the cheapest option. Right, so it's quite a substantial amount of money, but there is a small business license I want to show to you. We go here. You have here a small business license. What are the conditions? This one is for embedded device use. You don't need the one on the left side, but the one on the right side, 530 euros a year. That's quite a deal. That's, I think, all right for what you get, because you get a really large, very well-established, mature framework. Um, so the only issue to be aware of is, well, several issues. First of all, uh, a small business is defined as a business with less than or up to 1 million euro annual revenue or US dollar if you're in the US. Now that's not what I would call a small business. That's already quite a sizable business. And that should be all right. If you have more revenue, you should be able to pay for the full license the full enterprise license, the more costly option. But the catch is that you have to show to the QT company that you are a small business. You have to provide all the documents and that might even incur additional costs. Maybe they need translations and maybe even lawyer fees. If there's a problem with that. And they do that every 12 months. So they want to see every 12 months when your license is renewed that you are a small business and they need to have proof. And it's basically up to them to decide in the end. If they have doubts, they can, that is in the conditions here, they can have a financial audit of your company. So that might even lead to additional costs. You should be aware of that. The small business license is a cool deal if you have a small business, but it implies that you have to show to them that you're a small business every 12 months. Now, for me, that's not such a great option. So if you have, if you're located in the US, for instance, you can found a business very easily. It maybe costs $200 and that's it. There are no additional running costs, but I'm in Portugal. And if I found a small business, it's also very easy and there are no uh, special costs, but there are some additional running costs because I'm required to have a certified accountant and a certified accountant is not cheap in Portugal. I mean, it starts at maybe a hundred euros, but that would be the cheapest you can actually get. More realistically, you will pay 200 euros per month for a business, even when it has zero revenue. So that's not ideal. If you're developing a product, have no revenue, have no income, but have to pay like 200 euros a month, just as a precondition to be able to afford the small business license for Qt, that's not ideal, right? So that's not a good option, unfortunately for people in 
countries like Portugal, where it's not so easy to found a business and has additional costs. That being said, I would still probably go with Qt if I wanted to develop for desktop and want a product that is really technically according to what people would expect um, in the sense that you are not limited in terms of widgets very much and it will just work, you know. Um, right, for mobile, yeah, it depends if you have uh, one source and you want to use Go, it will be an option, but you might even have to end up with using both of the bindings and that means also maybe some changes in the source code or conditional compilation because of the lack of iOS support in the MIT licensed binding. Maybe they changed that, maybe they support it, or maybe they just haven't tested it yet and it works. I haven't uh, investigated this further. So that's it. There is maybe one more caveat to let, point out here that is quite important. Many people just think, okay, hey, Qt uh, is such a nice framework. I'll just download the community edition, start working on it, and great, here are the Go bindings, now start working, make some product. But you cannot do that. You have to decide whether you want to have LGPL licensed products or a commercial proprietary product. Because um, what will happen is if you have a product and if you come to them and then say, look, I have this product, I developed that under LGPL with the community edition, now I want to have a small business license, they will tell you no, Okay, then you have to pay for the time you used the Qt framework um, to develop your product. So you cannot just convert from LGPL to small business without additional costs. They want to see some money, maybe, I don't know, 1,500 euros for the time you developed this application, and then you can convert. They will allow that, but it will cost some money. Otherwise, everybody would just use the LGPL version, the community edition, and then buy the business license whenever it suits them, whenever they want to distribute their products. And uh, obviously that, that would be unfair and kind of a fraud and they can't allow that. So but they will be very strict about that. And I've heard that the QT company is very strict about licensing. So you need to watch how you talk to them and how you deal with that. And actually, so if you if you're a small business and you want to start developing a product, you should get a small business license and then start developing, not try any kind of trickery here. Right, that's it. I think it's a good deal if you have a business, um, but it's not ideal if you don't have a business and are just a solo developer. And there's always the threat that you know, something might go wrong in this auditioning or with the documentation you provide and then they say, okay, you have to pay the full license. Then it's going to be quite expensive, especially if you're developing a product and don't even know how much revenue you will make with it. Right. But it's a very good framework. So that's it for today. I hope you found this video useful and see you next time when I talk about another big framework, but one that is completely different from Qt, I would say, and that is GTK version 3 and version 4. Bye!